Good morning and yeah. welcome to St. David's. Thank you for joining us on this last Sunday of Easter. I think they're about ready to start. Come on in. Welcome to worship at St. David's United Church in West Vancouver. We know we are scattered all over the place, but we're glad that you've taken the time to join together in worship. I'm the Reverend Dal McCrindle, and on the piano is Peter Vanderhorst, and we have Melinda Shard, who's going to be reading scripture today, and John, Mandy, and Melinda will form our choir from various places in the sanctuary. Leanne is on the techni technical booth, and Jordan Chong is our cameraman, and we're very appreciative of he and the Shore Church for assisting us in uh, this, this taping. Uh, while Peter was playing the prelude, uh, Mandy lit the Christ candle, reminding us that Christ is always present, especially at this time. She also lit a smaller candle in memory of Jen Casey, Captain Jen Casey, who was killed this week in Kamloops. At the end of our worship today, there will be a screen that will show you how you may contribute to supporting the church and these services if you so choose. Uh, tax receipts will be issued for those gifts. So, let us worship. Our hymn is Hail Thee Festival Day, and as our choir found out, it's quite a challenge because the tune jumps all over the place. So just try to follow them, and if they get lost and you get lost, don't worry about it. Hail Thee Festival Day.
I told you that was going to be a challenge. The words to that hymn were written in 582, and there are several hundred verses. We only chose four and the chorus. So it's always good to learn something new. Let us join together in the call to worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Clap your hand, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. The Lord is awesome, ruler over all the earth. Sing praises to God, sing praises. God is the ruler of all the earth. The shields of the earth belong to God. Let us worship the exalted one. Let us pray. God, you revealed yourself to us in Jesus. You lived among us and left us with a job to do. You did not abandon us. You empowered us with your spirit so that we might be strengthened to be your witnesses, not only to these things, but of your love and care for us and all creation. We praise and worship you for the assurance that your kingdom of peace and justice will hold favor on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, we sing his words. Let us come before God with our confession. Let us pray. O oh God, forgive our foolish ways. We live as though your only care for us. You speak as though we have the only sight. We act as though you have only chosen us for power. We live as though Jesus only spoke to us and only called us to be your voice in the world. Within our family, community, and world, we fail to witness to the word that we speak. We despair at the absence of new converts and witnesses while we continue to exclude by our own actions those we seek. Our awareness and sensitivity of others' pain is clouded by a preoccupation with our own. We cannot nor will not break loose from the strictures and structures of our culture, society, or prejudice. Forgive us, God of mercy, God of grace, God of compassion. Amen. There is nothing that cannot be forgiven by the love of God in Christ Jesus, who died on the cross, was resurrected and ascended to heaven, there to intercede for us. Sin and death are overcome. We are set free to begin again to live, to work, to pray, as people who are free, thanks be to God. Amen. Halle, halle, halle.
Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upward toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Hear the witness of the apostle. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed are you, God, for the gift of Jesus. As his followers, we declare that we are children of the light, called to bring light to the darkness. As the smoke from this candle rises to the ceiling, we live as Jesus' light in the world shining in the darkness. We give thanks, O God, that having lived in the Easter light and come to the beginning of our journey with you, we know that we are not left on our own through Jesus Christ, light of the world. And so, we relight the Christ candle. Acknowledge that Christ is with us always. Amen. Luke 24, 44 to 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem 
with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Hear the witness of the gospel. Praise, Praise be, to, be you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Our hymn is an old one. You might remember it from your Sunday school days. God be with you. army background in that hymn. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, in the stillness while we wait on thee. Hushed, our hearts listen in expectancy. Speak, O blessed Master, in this quiet hour. May we see thy face, Lord, and feel thy touch of power. Amen. In today's readings, we are told that Jesus has, in effect, said his goodbyes. He leaves the disciples to carry on being the church. Not that they understand everything yet, nor that they ever would, but they are now the church. 
He says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria. And just to make sure that this testifying will not be limited to the Jewish world alone, he adds, and to the ends of the earth. They are to be the ones who will speak about God and God's ways. But even after the recording of the events of the resurrection, The disciples are very unclear of the situation. They want to know if this is the time for the Messiah to arrive. Is this the time for the kingdom of Israel to be restored? You will remember that some thought Jesus was about to usher in the greatness and grandeur of Israel's former days. And if that were the case, those closest to the reigning monarch might benefit from some patronage. Many people are still waiting for the Messiah who might reestablish Israel as a world power. There's even a group in Jerusalem who are preparing for that arrival, getting ready to outfit a new temple. How slow were the disciples to comprehend that the kingdom of which Jesus spoke was something else, something less tangible but much more enduring. Just possibly the kingdom and power that some in Israel await has already arrived, been firmly established. There's nothing more, maybe. God is in control and has more on his mind than that. Jesus has just spoken about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, would this be the power that turned things around for us? Yes and no. The spirit of which Jesus speaks does not come to raise the disciples to positions of privilege, but to ways of service and as witnesses of God's ways. The disciples in the church are not called to speculation about the timing of God's work. Hear Jesus' words again. It is not for you to know the times or period that the Father has set by his own authority but rather we are called to do what Jesus commissions them and us to do. You will receive power to be witnesses. The physical description of Jesus' departure by Luke is a difficult one for people in our scientific age. It's sometimes ridiculous to think of Jesus ascending to heaven up there in a cloud. But how else might you speak about Jesus' departure when you believe that God was somewhere up there. The theological insight that Luke paints uh, is valid since we think of Jesus continuing a journey maybe not upward but Godward. However we might understand resurrection or life after death or the returning of one's soul, spirit or personality to the one, to the God who created us, Jesus has left this world in a physical way, certainly in the way that he once acted and functioned. No longer is Jesus a physical player revealing God's plans of action. No, the focus has shifted. The actors have changed, but the power remains. It is God who will enable the work to be done. Steering longingly toward upward or Godward, after the one they loved and depended upon, the disciples truly wonder what they are to do now. Many years ago, when I was the youngish minister here at St. David's, actually it was about 30 years ago, I lived down on Jefferson and 22nd. My neighbors, then both in their 90s, still living on their own in their home. They moved into a care facility when Jim was 98 and Susan was 97. Of course, they're both gone now, but I fondly remember them, especially in the summer months, as I have a rose which I dug up and transplanted to my garden on Jefferson, and I successfully moved it to Horseshoe Bay three years ago. Jim, as I call him, the rose, burst forth into bright red bloom this week. 
Each time their children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren would visit, there was much celebrating and prayerful appreciation that another day had brought so much joy while so many in the world were suffering and living in want. Jim outlived Susan by a few years, but he was still entertaining the old folks, as he called them, with his mandolin at the senior center. He did that until he was 104. Jim lived his faith in humility and often spoke of his gratitude to God for his many, many blessings. And after many such a visit to their home, as the guests drove away, he would stand beside the road, waving his handkerchief, she beside him. Long after the guests had departed and disappeared from sight, they stood waving. I'll not forget that sight. For those lingering moments, they were transfixed, and I'm sure their thoughts were flooded with joyful memories of many past visits and the immediate one just concluded. I'm sure they both thought we might never see them again. Then, after the car turned the corner and traveled down 22nd, almost as abruptly as the car door had closed, they would turn into their yard, tears on their faces, and get on with the day. Similarly, the disciples have been gazing long after Jesus vanished from sight. Oh, how they wished he might have stayed longer, given them just a little more time, a little more training, a little more direction. Why didn't they ask him what to do now? But no. Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up into heaven? Hollers out the two in white robes, obviously heaven's messengers, probably had glowing lights shining on their heads, just like Tess, Monica, and Andrew on TV's Touched by an Angel series often do. Then, like my neighbors used to, abruptly they turn and they head back to Jerusalem, back to the place where danger lurked, where the job which Jesus had begun awaited, unfinished leaving them to do the work. Why are you looking there when there's work to be done over there? Jesus' very long prayer, as recorded in chapter 17 of John's Gospel, was set down during a time when the church was faced with conflict and persecution. His words encouraged that troubled church to carry on for they now were the ones who had to remain in the world to share the message of God's love and forgiveness, even in the face of danger, of evil. We may not feel that we live in such a world as they, or maybe we do. In 2020, our challenges are different from those who have gone before. Our world, our community, our congregations are very different but our task remains the same. It is now our turn to be in the world, knowing that Christ's prayer is for each and every one of us. We cannot stand and longingly gaze backward and wish for things which cannot ever be the same. Jesus commissioned his disciples to be witnesses. He said goodbye. God be with you. And then he left them with God's Spirit and departed, trusting in their ministry. So too, each one of us has been commissioned in what we now say and what we do. We speak and demonstrate whatever it is that we believe. If our world is going to know something, anything about the saving significance of Jesus Christ and the love of God for us, it's up to people like you and me. In an imagined conversation, someone is heard to question God, and God, what is your plan if this doesn't work? And God answers, I have no other plan. There is no other plan. Why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Get on with it. At least that's the way I see it.
Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the eternal significance of the ascension of Jesus and the implication on our view of the world that Jesus ascended to a place of freedom, power, and authority from which to continue to draw us and all creation back to you. We pray that Jesus cares intimately for us and intercedes for us and the world. We do pray for ourselves, that we invite and allow Jesus to be the Lord of every aspect of our life as individuals and as Christ's body here on earth. We also pray that we be enabled by the power of your Spirit to fulfill the responsibilities entrusted to us as church for the mission and work of Christ's body. May our vision of Christ's power and authority be enlarged. We pray for the release from fear for those who believe the world is out of control and for those who depend only on human resources to achieve even a tenuous and fragile sense of security that they might come to rely on Christ. We pray for those in places of responsibility that they recognize that you who spoke creation into being are still with us. Comfort those whose life memories are distorted by pain, grief, or regret. Send your healing love on us all. We remember and pray for all Canadians who are saddened by the untimely death of Captain Jen Casey, especially her family and friends and our brothers and sisters in Nova Scotia. We are grateful, God, for those who serve and protect us all and for those who stand on any of the front lines facing any and all dangers that come their way. Comfort those who are isolated and alone or fear losing their way, security, or future because of this pandemic. We join our prayers to those who pray for your intervention in their lives, that people everywhere might enjoy life in the fullness which you have envisioned. Continue to empower and protect us as we witness to your redeeming grace as shown in Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns.
Go now into the world as followers of Jesus Christ, taking with you the gospel of Jesus that he has given you, knowing that you have been empowered and strengthened by God's very spirit to do this work. And now may the blessings of God, who loves you intently, be with you this day and forever. Amen. And the people said, Amen. Amen.